Alright guys, so in today's step-by-step build-along video, we are going to be showing you how to assemble a NEMA 23 belt and pinion system. So as you can see, this is a super awesome system. It's sleek design with our extra large gantry plate and our NEMA 23 motor so you can add some extra torque to this system. We also have a GT3 timing pulley as well as a GT3 belt that makes this system super rigid and accurate. It's a really awesome system guys. Definitely something to consider when you consider the modularity of our system and how this functions and how you can change this to whatever your build might require. All right, so let's go ahead and get started on this build along video. All right guys, so on this first step we are going to be assembling our extreme V wheels. So in this step you're gonna need to pull out one of your wheel kits and unload the contents. You should have two precision shims, two of your open built bearings, one of your nylon hex nuts, and of course your extreme V wheel shell. So to assemble this wheel, we're gonna go ahead and grab one of our bearings, load it into the front face here of the extreme wheel, flip it over, put one of your precision shims in the middle and attach your additional bearing on the other side. And that is the assembly. So we're gonna go ahead and put these parts to the side, our precision shim and our nylon hex nuts. We will use those on our later steps. So we're gonna go ahead and assemble our three additional wheels and move on to the next step. All right guys, so moving forward here, on this step we are going to be assembling our wheels to our extra large gantry plate. We're gonna need our XL plate as well as four of our 27 millimeter screws, two of our six millimeter aluminum spacers, two of our six millimeter centric spacers, four of our precision shims, four of our nylon hex nuts, and four of our already assembled wheels. Now remember these precision shims and nylon hex nuts come with your wheel kit, so we're bringing them over to this step. So in addition to that, our tooling is gonna to be our M5 ball driver, our permanent marker, and spanner wrench. So to get started guys, I wanna go ahead and show you the six millimeter eccentric. I have these pre-marked. So usually there's a six millimeter stamp here. What I do is I mark it with the permanent marker. That way it's easier to spot when I'm adding preload to the rail. As you can see, this lip here is indented. So it works as a cam. So as you rotate, it tightens the wheels snug to the rail. So go ahead and mark your two eccentrics. And then from there, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the assembly. Taking notice to our whole spacing here, we're gonna be going to the furthest corners on our XL plate. The top portion here is slightly larger than the bottom. Our centric spacers that are gonna go on top. And then our regular aluminum spacers will be fixed here at the bottom. So let's go ahead and load our 27 millimeter screws into each corner. From there, I'm just gonna rotate the plate around. All right, now that the screws are in place, we're gonna go ahead and start our stacking configuration. Starting with our aluminum spacers first, go ahead and put a six millimeter aluminum spacer on both screws, followed by our precision shims. In addition to that, we're gonna go ahead and add our extreme wheels. And then we're gonna go ahead and thread our nylon hex nuts on top. All right, so now let's go ahead and move on to the top side here, which is our eccentric side. Taking our eccentrics, we're gonna go ahead and put our marked side away from our fixed wheels. So it's gonna be facing away from us. So go ahead and lock those into both screws. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and add our precision shims next, followed by our extreme wheels. And let's go ahead and thread on our nylon hex nuts. All right, so let's go ahead and rotate this to the side. And we're gonna go ahead and tighten down our wheels. So now we have our wheels assembled to our extra large plate. As you can see, this is looking really nice, guys. We're gonna go ahead and put this to the side and we'll move on to our next step. All right, guys, moving on to the next step here. We are going to be assembling our motor mount plate to our extra large gantry system that we have thus far. So we're gonna need our NEMA 23 motor mounting plate, our NEMA 23 motor, six of our 12 millimeter screws, four of our M5 nylon hex nuts, one of our GT3 22 timing pulleys, one of our double T-nuts, our trusty ball driver set here, and our spanner wrench, which you can purchase on the Open Builds parts store, and I definitely recommend this set. Very handy, guys. So let's go ahead and get started here. 
we go ahead and take our NEMA 23 motor mounting plate and attach it here to the top portion of our extra large plate. So as you can see these two holes here, these are what we're going to attach our slotted holes to. So we're going to line that like so, making sure that our motor mounting plate has room from the top edge of the plate. That way our motor can mount to this system. So from there we're going to go ahead and take two of our 12 millimeter screws here and thread them through. And then we're going to take our double T-nut and attach it to the screws here. And we're going to go ahead and tighten that system down, guys. All right, making sure that the motor mount plate has room here between the hole and the edge of the plate. That looks good, so we're going to go ahead and tighten this down. Excellent. So let's go ahead and mount our motor next. Taking our NEMA 23 motor here, we're going to place it into the hole. It should kind of snap into place here. You want to make sure that your holes are exposed here so we can fit our 12 millimeter screws through. That looks great. So let's go ahead and add these screws now. All right, now we're going to go ahead and thread on our black nylon hex nuts here to each one of our screws. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and tighten those down, guys. All right, excellent. So that's nice and tight. As you can see, it fits perfectly here to our motor mounting plate. Now we're gonna go ahead and take our GT3 22 timing pulley and attach it here to the flat part of our motor shaft. We wanna make sure that we kind of align the timing pulley here to our wheels. And let's go ahead and tighten that down, guys. All right, so now that we have that complete we're going to go ahead and take notice here to our spacing on our nylon hex nuts. We want to bring this whole system down against our extra large plate. Basically the reason that we have our motor a little bit higher is so we can attach our nylon hex nuts without any interference of the plate. But now that we have our motor assembled, we want to bring this plate down. And the reason for doing so is these nuts are going to keep the system from turning side to side if there was a bunch of torque put onto the system. So let's go ahead and loosen these two screws here, just slightly. And then we're just going to slide the system down until you have connection here with the nylon hex nuts in your extra large plate. Then we're going to just tighten those screws back up. And make sure that those screws are tight, guys. Excellent. So now we don't have any movement in that system. This is looking really sharp, guys. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, guys, so in this step, we're going to be adjusting our centrics to our belt and pinion system that we have thus far. We're going to need our 20 by 80 500 millimeter V-slot rail and our assembly and a spanner wrench here, and we're going to go ahead and adjust these eccentrics down, guys. So simply slide this onto the rail here, just like so. Then we're going to go ahead and adjust our centrics here on top. We're going to rotate these eccentrics in the same direction to add proper preload to our wheels. Alright, that's perfect. So as you can see here, there's no movement in our belt and pinion system that we have so far. And that looks great, guys. So we're going to go ahead and put this to the side for now. And let's move on to the next step. Alright guys, so moving forward here on this step, we are going to be assembling our GT3 timing belt to our belt and pinion system that we have thus far. We're going to need two of our 8mm screws, two of our M5 T-nuts, our GT3 timing belt, and our assembly. So we're going to go ahead and start off by standing the system upright. Taking our GT3 timing belt, we're going to run it through this channel here underneath the wheels until we get it through all the way to the other side here. And basically I like to uh, keep it consistent on each side as far as how much slack that I have. So I'm going to pull it all the way until it matches up. That looks good. So now we're going to go ahead and take one of our M5 T-nuts here, making sure that the flange side, the lip side, is facing upward. That way we can actually fit this T-nut into place. 
because the GT3 timing belt is quite thick. We're going to go ahead and take our 8mm screw here. Go ahead and thread that into place. We're going to go ahead and tighten that down onto our GT3 timing belt. And you don't want to over tighten it because the belt will twist. So that's about perfect right there. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and make a loop here in the middle. So kind of pinch each side together here close to the wheels. It creates a loop and I'm going to go ahead and put that around my GT3 timing pulley. And then from there I'm going to pull this side tight. I'm going to slide in my other M5 T-nut. Just like so. You want to make sure it's nice and tight guys. Make sure to pull and then add your 8mm screw here. Let's go ahead and tighten that down. Alright, that's perfect. So we're going to go ahead and take our excess and just slide it into our track here. Alright, perfect guys. So now our belt and system is complete with our NEMA 23 motor on our extra large gantry plate. As you can see, this is a really smooth system. And that runs great, guys. Excellent job.